Hello and welcome to Math 200 Statistics Online at Kenyatta College. My name is Ray Lapuz and I'm the instructor for this course. And this is just a quick overview of what is expected and uh, a short preview of what is in store for you. So the first thing to do probably is to go to my website at smccd.edu slash accounts slash LAPUZ and if you scroll down or you click on courses, I'll click on courses, we'll see that in the fall 2015 semester we have this course uh, Math 200 OLH online. Now the first thing I want to go over quickly is the syllabus. If you click on the syllabus there, this will open up another page that would have a PDF version of my syllabus that you can download and keep for your records. So here's basic information. Um, I want to point out that my email is rlapuz2 at my.smccd.edu. <clears throat> so if you need to get a hold of me, you can email me via that email. Uh, we have prerequisites, the course description, are things that you can see in a catalog. The course materials needed for this class is the uh, a graphing calculator and uh, access to the computer and uh, um, a subscription to my math lab now this my math lab course we will we'll see later on has the whole textbook so you can decide that if you don't need a hard copy of the textbook you can just go into my math lab and access a textbook there otherwise if you do want to read something uh, an actual book then you can purchase the book. The bookstore would have it uh, bundled together the, the textbook and the access code for the for the courseware uh, and I think it's reasonably cheaper if you get it bundled than if you were to get it separately. Okay we have student learning outcomes and we have resources listed here. We have an academic uh, integrity policy that says not to cheat. And let's take a, a deeper look at the grading here. So your grades will be based on uh, several parts of the course. Your homework will be done online through my math lab. And again, we'll take a look at that. Now they have due dates, and so it's important <clears throat> that if you missed uh, a homework assignment or two, uh, you know the procedure for making up a homework and the procedure is to send me an email at my <clears throat> rlapuz2 at my.smccd.edu email account and you need to <clears throat> write the subject title as make up homework and then in the body of the message you let me know which assignments you want to make up the quizzes are 10 percent of your grade as well and these quizzes will be something that you can uh, download and either write by hand or type on a computer and then you will submit this online uh, the, exam the quizzes are like the bridge from the homework to the exams the exams are going to be proctored and they will be handwritten paper pencil and you get a calculator to um, uh, to use during the exam now there's going to be two exams and we'll see that we'll take a look at the dates down below and one final exam now the final exam will have two parts an online portion which we will which will cover the the older material and uh, a proctored portion which will cover the newer material now uh, the newer material and the proctored portion will be a lot of the computations but there is going to be one page in the proctored portion, portion that will cover the uh, some theory and definitions that we've covered throughout the whole course. Uh, we also have journal assignments worth 5% uh, of your grade and that's uh, a lot of uh, essays and write-ups and things like that. <clears throat> now there's a study plan tutorial that uh, you can explore and uh, that will account that will account 2.5 percent of your grade as extra credit and so I basically just use this study plan tutorial 
uh, for for people in the borderline situations and if you're in borderline uh, between an A and a B or something like that then I will look at the study plan tutorials to see how much of that has been completed and factor in uh, that as 2.5 percent of your grade okay we have a standard grading scheme and then there's gr the grade book will be in my math lab we'll take a look at that when we go to my math lab and uh, it'll be updated periodically so here's a breakdown for my math lab uh, again we'll, we'll take a look at this when we uh, go to that site but there's a handful of dates here and a more complete list in the schedule but I want to point out that the first exam will be uh, either on the 29th or the 30th of September and when I say either it's it's up to you which uh, which day you want to come in I usually give extra credit uh, for coming in the first day uh, just to get people encouraged to, to take the exam earlier uh, the same for exam two in a span of two days you get to a two-hour time slot to take the uh, second exam in September on uh, November 3rd or 4th and then the final exam will be on the 15th or the 16th of December. Another handful of uh, administrative dates here. We have the last day to add or drop the class with a refund is uh, August 28th. Uh, the last day to, uh, to drop the class uh, is September 7th. And then you have one final gasp. If you really need to drop the class, you will have a W in your record. But if you can do that, you won't be assigned a grade uh, if you do this by November 16th. Okay, that's a quick look at the syllabus. Now another quick look at uh, the schedule. <coughs> the schedule is laid out for the whole semester. And we have homeworks are generally due on, the, on the Wednesdays. The quizzes are due on Thursdays and then there's some journal assignments that are due on Fridays and then the exams are listed here as stated before the first exam is on September 29th and 30th the second exam is November 3rd or 4th and then the final exam is December 15th or 16th okay so this is a, a good overview to, to print out to have your for yourself uh, and keep yourself scheduled so that you know when things are due Okay, let us go to uh, the my math lab site and see where to go from here. Uh, we're going to want to register first thing. We're going to want to register in my math lab, and in order to do that, you click on student register here. Now it says here that you need three things: an email, a course ID, and uh, an access code or credit card. <coughs> So uh, the course ID can be found in the syllabus or can be found on my website. So let me go ahead and copy this. And that's my course ID. The access code or credit card will be your payment. So the access code, it would be something that you would have if you had uh, bought the access code from the bookstore. <coughs> or you can pay for it online. All right, let's register. Let's put in our course ID. And now it's going to ask if you have a Pearson account. If you have taken uh, an algebra class and in, uh, at Kenyatta College where they used uh, my math lab, then you do have a Pearson account. If you went through uh, Math Jam and uh, <coughs> uh, enrolled in any of the courses there, you will also have a Pearson account. And so uh, just to be clear that we are in this particular course this is a course that we're going to want to enroll in alright so I do have um, a Pearson account so I'm going to type in my information and now I have this uh, stage here where it's asking me if I have an access code uh, like I said if you had purchased the code from the bookstore you will have an access code and if I click on this your access code will look like uh, a combination of six words and uh, you just type them in here and then click finish. If you uh, are going to purchase this online 
you would need a credit card and you would click on this and then you would also go on if you don't have uh, the money at this moment and hopefully you'll get the money in f within 14 days you can get a temporary access without payment for 14 days here so if you click on this and agree to the terms and conditions that they're going to have then you will have access to the course now if you don't have money now or your financial aid is going to kick in in a, in a week or so this is the, the option for you now just remember if you click on this you have temporary access uh, and it'll eventually expire so you will need to pay for it and if you don't <coughs> uh, then you, you, you're going to lose your stuff uh, and then you'll get kicked out of this this particular courseware alright so uh, if you didn't have a Pearson account then you would just go ahead and register you would create an account here where you would put in your email, a username and password. Now the username and the password are going to be the um, the credentials that you'll need to to log in to my math lab in the future. So uh, make sure you remember whatever it is. Uh, your first name and your last name it would be um, uh, should match the the name, your first name and your last name that you use to register for web smart uh, at Kenyatta College and so uh, that would be easier for me to keep track of, of names. Now I understand some people might change their names or they might use their middle name or something like that so just try to be as consistent as you can so that when I transfer grades over from um, from my roster to uh, my math lab or from my math lab in entering the grades in WebSmart that I will have uh, your accurate information. Okay. So now that you've registered for this, let's say that you've actually registered for this. Let's uh, re-enter my math lab and uh, the registration is a one-time thing. By the way, uh, if you're having issues in registering, uh, there are some videos here that would walk you through um, the registration process. So once you have registered in the future, uh, the way you will get into my math lab is by clicking on signing, sign in, and then use your information to to sign in. Now when you sign in on the left hand side you should have a list of courses um, that you're taking uh, and if you're only taking one My Math Lab course then you'll only have one My Math Lab course. Okay uh, so you click on that to enter your course. Now my course is going to look a little bit different than yours because I'm an instructor and I have a few other things. I have this uh, icon with a slash through it. That means I have that particular menu item but uh, the students will not. Alright so let's focus on the menu items that don't have that icon and let's take a look at uh, these menu items here. The course homepage. The course homepage gives you a layout of things that are due of uh, upcoming assignments through my math lab. Some announcements and a snapshot of your grade that has been recorded in the gradebook. Okay, so you have all this information at the very beginning at the sl splash page, but I still would like for you to uh, look at the the, the calendar, um, the overview calendar, to get an idea of what's going to be coming up. All right, so that's the course home. Uh, the second is a discussion board, and uh, we have uh, right now one discussion board here, the welcome discussion board, and uh, this is just something that uh, you can do in your own time if you want. It's uh, it's just uh, a way to introduce ourselves through the, uh, the discussion board, introduce ourselves to the class, and to see um, why you're taking this class. So. 
it's uh it's not a big deal it's not going to be graded but i think it would be fun to have everybody know that there are other people taking this class and you're not alone so i'm going to click back on main menu to get back to the main menu uh, the next is the homework now if you go to course home again you'll see that there's some assignments here for you but if you go to homework here you get the list of all the assignments and we have an orientation uh, section one two one three one four one five two 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 three they have the due dates listed here on the side so uh, you can keep track of that so how does the homework look like let's uh, let's take a quick peek at a homework uh, section I'm gonna jump to section two three here uh, section two three has uh, looks like it has four problems let's click on the first one and what it's going to do is it'll open up a window um, where uh, they have a question and then they have some choices here so this is one type of problem where it's just a simple multiple choice but there are other types of problems here like in this case it's a it's a problem where you have to type something in so it's not all multiple choice uh, and some would be a combination of things so this one has uh, two parts I think there's a multiple choice and then a, a short fill and answer <clears throat> and the same with this one so let's take a look at the process of uh, trying to answer some of these questions if you um, try to answer these questions uh, usually for a multiple choice question that has three or that has four choices it'll give you three attempts at it and here I just selected a three times and I didn't get it correct so uh, finally it'll say sorry that's not correct and then it'll tell you what the correct answer is and it'll give you an X mark here uh, the good news is that you can try again and then you can see if you can answer it correctly this time so um, let's see if we can answer it correctly so now it's correct and then when you click on uh, next question or when you close this you'll see that the X mark now has become a check mark okay let's go to the next question um, let's take a look at this one so I'm going to answer this um, incorrectly again. By the way, at each answer, it'll give you uh, some hints on how to see if you can proceed to answer it correctly. And um, let's check it one more time. And then it's not correct. The correct answer is 19. My answer was 5. So again, I can close this, and I can move on to the next one and then I can come back to that later so here choose a histogram um, let's try B let's try A okay so that one was correct and then uh, press continue if you have multiple parts to your problem um, are data reported or measured so let's say that appears to be reported okay so that's general idea uh, some a lot of these problems in the later sections you'll have to actually do computations but let me show you what happens uh, here if you take a look at the overview you see that uh, I've got two questions correct and one question incorrect and another one I haven't done and for some reason if your power goes out or you get disconnected or something like that I I didn't save that but it automatically saves the work that you've already completed uh, even if you didn't actually save it so if you do want to come back to it you can come back to it so I'm curious about question number two again uh, let's see if I can get that X out of the way and then see if I can make a, a correction here I'll try a similar question uh, histogram on the right represents weights and pounds of members of a certain high school program programming team 
how many team members are included in the histogram. So let's count 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, uh, 16. So let's try 16 for this one. Um, if, if your answer needs to include powers or fractions or square roots or anything like that, you have choices here. If you click on more, you'll see there's more mathematical symbols that you can use if needed. So I'm going to go with 16. All I need to put in is a number. We'll check the answer and got that correct. Now I'll take a look at the X mark. X mark becomes a check mark. Oops, this is number two. X mark becomes a check mark. And if I look at my overview, it all has been checked off, which means I got those things correct. Okay. So uh, I had a comment in one orientation that I did where uh, since I can do this uh, basically an infinite num a number of times, uh, there should be no excuses to not get 100 in every homework assignment. Well, um, that is a correct statement, uh, but reasons why people won't get 100 is because they don't start the homework in time, they run out of time, and then you're up against a deadline and you're not going to finish all the homework assignments or you're trying really hard and you can't really figure a problem out then you just kind of give up on it and then uh, leave one or two questions out of uh, 10 or 15. Uh, some of these homework sets get larger than this. This is a fairly small set. Uh, some homework sets go up to about uh, 10 questions, maybe 15 questions. Okay, uh, that is the homework. Let's take a look at the next uh, section, which is quizzes, the next menu item. And so when you click on quizzes initially, this is what you'll see. And it says click on one of the quizzes to access the quiz instructions. So uh, right now, you're at the beginning of the course, you're probably only going to see the three quizzes. But there are more quizzes here. So let's take a look at quiz number one. So we're going to download either a PDF or a doc file. We're going to do the quiz, and we're going to save it. Uh, as a doc file or take a picture or scan it. You can save it as a JPEG or a PDF. Um, or you, uh, people have actually used their, their their cell phones to take a picture of it and then, uh, and then upload that JPEG. Now here's a key though. <clears throat> we want to make sure that you save that file appropriately. Uh, so I want you to use your last name and your first initial and an underscore Q1 to represent quiz 1. <clears throat> so that's the actual file. So if I took a picture of my work and then uh, <clears throat> and then uh, I, I save it on my computer or on my phone, I would want to label this as uh, my last name first initial underscore Q1. Okay, so that is the file that you're going to submit. Uh, let's uh, let's take a quick look at this. So here's uh, the first quiz. Uh, this is a PDF, so this is probably something that you would print out and then do. Uh, the other option is you can do a doc file, um, and you can download a doc file and then um, print that out, and then or, or not print it out, but you can save it. Again, you know, the saving uh, scheme is to use your last name, your first initial, underscore Q1. So you save that file as this, and then when you're ready to submit, we'll submit using this thing. Okay, so the submit says to go to the document sharing, uh, select quiz number one submit, and then upload the document. So let's uh, check out the submission process here. Let's go back to the main menu, and document sharing is uh, is a couple down from quizzes. So let's take a look at document uh, sharing, and here is quiz number one. I'll change that to quiz number one submit. I need you to click on this first. So right now there's uh, there's this blank space over here. I need you to click on quiz number one submit, and now you'll see that the quiz number one submit is uh, what you're going to work on here upload a document. <clears throat> uh, so normally this would work okay, but let's assume it's working okay. You upload a document 
and then you're going to choose a file from your computer assuming that you've saved it into your computer uh, you're going to leave this clicked on instructor only and then you're going to upload the document so once you upload the document then it's going to be something that I can see and then I can uh, collect all the quizzes and then grade them uh, and it's important because I'm collecting a whole bunch of quizzes it is important um, that you name your file appropriately so I won't lose your quiz alright okay so that's the quiz story uh, the journals are kinda similar there's going to be eight journal assignments and uh, four of them are going to be submitted the same way that you would submit a quiz and then the other four will be a discussion board kind of journal assignment so let's take a look at journal number one this one is an autobiography about yourself and it looks like I need to change a due date here but um, write about yourself and your background and if you like math and then you want to save it again as your last name and your first name but this time it's journal one so let's save it as underscore j1 and then you go through the submission process uh, like we had before so that's one type of journal assignment the other type of journal assignment like journal number two is a discussion board journal assignment so this discussion board journal assignment is going to be uh, something where you can respond to a, a statement that I would pose and then uh, you get to see your your classmates responses as well so it says here uh, courseware analysis now that you've explored the course give comments about the strengths and weaknesses of the course website and that the website is my math lab so just click respond and just say a few sentences about this particular course so these are the types of journal assignments that you'll be getting um, and there were 10 points each so it's really not a mathematical assignment it's really just a check for yourself and it's worth 5% of your grade okay so we took a look at the document sharing uh, just a few more menus to look at the chapter content we'll see is the whole textbook so e-text and the chapter content is broken down by chapters and so if you take a look at uh, one of these chapters like chapter 2 and uh, specifically on this section we can see a video lecture multimedia e-textbook or study plan let's go to multimedia e-textbook and provided that your plugins are all set OK you should be able to see the book so if you actually have the book the hard copy of the book and you turn to page 44 you will see exactly what you're seeing here the only difference between uh, your hard cover your hard copy book and this is that you have clickable buttons here where if you're reading through a frequency distribution you can click on this video icon and then it'll show you an actual person who's going to discuss the frequency distribution hi I'm Dr. Jackie White from St. Leo University and in this lesson we will look at how to summarize data in frequency tables the best actresses because there are only 12 in the age bracket from 41 to 50 and only two in each of the remaining age bracket brackets for the ages of best actresses okay so those are the videos those are the types of videos that are available for you and as you go through the book you can navigate through here by pages as you go through the book you'll see more of these icons um, like a try it yourself icon which will lead you to a page similar to the homework set and some other other types of multimedia that would be available here for you um, now one thing I, I do want to note is that um, you can click and browse and search so if you're searching for 
the normal distribution, for example, you can just click on that and you can either search the entire book, a specific chapter, or let's try that again. So you can search the entire book, a specific chapter, or you can just browse through what they found in a specific book and then it gives you an idea where it is in chapter 6 or in chapter 7, what page number, etc. Okay, so this is, uh, this is your e-textbook and you can find the e-textbook under chapter contents, chapter contents in the main menu. All right, let's uh, take a look at multimedia library. Now I mentioned that there were some videos and there were some uh, um, other things that you can find as you're walking through the, the textbook. Now a multimedia is another way to search for these things <coughs> by chapter and by section and we have uh, it says here that we have uh, seven types of media that are available for some of some of these chapters. So an animation, a multimedia textbook section, a PowerPoint presentation, a section video lecture, and another video. And so the video here, these videos are actually looking at exercises. So an animation is kind of like a video Distributions of data values can have a wide variety of shapes. Uh, but it's not an actual person talking. So if you want an actual person talking, we would click on video, and then you'll see the video of, uh, this is the author, by the way, Mario Triola. Uh, you'll see the video of Mario or one of his colleagues uh, talking about a particular top, uh, topic. A PowerPoint presentation you can download. We saw the textbook already. But these videos here are actual problems uh, solving for problems. Let's see. This question now asks us to construct the histogram that corresponds to the frequency distribution from the previous exercise. So there's a, a lot of the problems that you'll have in homework correlate with a problem from the textbook and then you can try to match it up or you can just uh, view some of these problems uh, uh, that are done by some of the students and the TAs from that school. So that's a multimedia library. Uh, the gradebook will get populated automatically through the homework because the, the homeworks are graded automatically. But the other things that are graded that are not graded automatically are things like your journal assignments, your quizzes, and the exams. So for those, I usually take about a week to grade them, uh, sometimes less, but within a week you should see the grade of the quiz that you turned in. So say you your first quiz was due on September 3rd, so by the 10th you should see the score for that quiz, maybe sooner, but you'll see your score for that quiz and then it'll go on this grade book. Now one thing I have to warn you about the grade book is that the grade book is a little generous sometimes and that if you did not do a homework assignment, or any assignment, then it's not going to count that as part of your grade. Uh, but realistically, if you don't do an assignment, then you would get a zero for it. And so that zero will eventually bring down your overall average. So be careful and make sure you complete all the assignments. <clears throat> a study plan is uh, the option, uh, the extra credit option that we have. And what this is, is that it, uh, it allows you to practice more problems with the homework. Um, so if you go to view all chapters in your study plan, you can see these uh, chapters over here. And then uh, you can click on any of these sections and then just try practicing some of this, some of this work. And what you can do if you're ready to do to do this, uh, I think you need to practice it before you can do a quiz me. Uh, you're going to do the quiz me, and then uh, you'll get a score for that particular section. And then once you get the score for that section, then that will count towards your 
your extra credit. Okay. So you can explore the rest of the um, the study plan and see what else you can find there. Okay, for now the last one is Tools for Success. There's StatCrunch and some other links over here, uh, Stats Talk and, and other video exercises. So if you feel like you want to explore this, you can go ahead and explore it and see what you can find uh, that might be useful for you. Um, in general, none of this is really needed for the course, but uh, you guys are paying a lot for this courseware, and they do have a lot to offer. So if you do have time, it would be good to take advantage of some of those services. All right. Uh, in the future, I will include a handful of uh, uh, new menu items. Uh, the calculator help gives you information about um, the some some uh, calculator hints on how to use the calculator. Uh, I have uh, I taught this class as a hybrid in the summer of 2014, and there could be uh, there'll eventually be lectures that I've created uh, for this class that you can view. Uh, it's not quite available yet, but I'll make that available in, in a week or so. And uh, later on, you'll get exam information about taking the test and then some reviews. So for exam number one, for example, uh, you'll get a review sheet for this. It'll tell you an outline for the test. And then uh, it'll give you instructions for actually taking the exam. So um, this is going to pop up maybe a couple of weeks before uh, you're, you actually take the exam. And then I'll make that announcement as well. All right. So that is uh, the general idea for um, tackling this my math lab portion of your of your course, and that's really the bulk of this. Um, and um, I think that's about it. Uh, aside from that, you should be able to jump in and and. Uh, get some work done and uh, explore the courseware and see what you can find and uh, and I hope uh, hope everything goes well so good luck to you and uh, remember that if you need uh, assistance or if you have a question you can send me an email and I want to reiterate that my email is rlapuz2 at my.smccd.edu Okay. All right. Well, I will see you online. Good luck.